Hello, my name's Anne Stewart, and here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's winter, and this morning I woke to a light frosting of snow. But two nights ago, something beautiful in the night sky, the moon and Jupiter and Saturn were all in line. And it had me thinking of the traditional peoples that would have lived around here, who would have told stories and watched the night sky for thousands and thousands of years. It is their cultural belief that Bunjil the Eagle, the creator of all, flies home to his nest on Jupiter every night. They also say that the bat is a friendly little sprite and he'll guide you home in the dark. Another star story is involved in the birth of modern day Australia. You see, in 1768, King George III and the Royal Society instructed Lieutenant James Cook to head to Tahiti to watch the transit of Venus. And on board, he had a sealed envelope with secret instructions to follow. And when he opened it, it said, you are to head west and look for that great south land. And another instruction, and you are to talk with the native people and ask, can we claim the land for Great Britain? And so he sailed west and eventually came to the east coast of Australia. He sailed from the south way to the north. He had many run-ins with the local Aboriginal people and he never did ask about claiming the land. And it was on the 22nd of August in 1770 that on a little island he called Possession Island, he planted the Union Jack and he claimed all of the continent of Australia for King George and England. When he got back to Australia, he said it was terra nullius, no man's land. But that's not true. For well, there were over 400 different Aboriginal nations that lived here and nearly a million people. White people call it colonisation. Our First Nations people call it invasion. We never sat and listened to the stories. As a child, I heard the stories of the Greek myths and legends of the stars coming from the Northern Hemisphere. No story from the south. Now one of our famous and important constellations is the Southern Cross on this dress I have. And it is featured on the Australian flag, it's even on the New Zealand flag, Papua New Guinea, Samoa and Brazil. It is an important constellation. But if we had only talked to our First Nations, we would have realised that there was many, many different stories of the Southern Cross coming from all these different nations. For instance, in the Gulf of Carpentaria, it's the shark chasing the stingray. In the desert, it's the eagle's footprint. Over west, or Noongar country, it's all about secret women's business. And just up the road from where I live, there is a creation story about the Garrawoods. But I need to go back a little. In 1836, an early explorer, Thomas Mitchell, traveled through the area to the north of here. The natives stayed hidden. They didn't want to see him. And he said that the land was empty and uncultivated and that it would make great farming land. And he thought that the mountain range that was called the Garrawoods looked like just like a place in Scotland and he called it the Grampians after his home country. He never sat to listen to the stories. But I remember taking my children to a cultural centre, Brambuck, and there there was a sound and light show and the kids' eyes were hooked as they watched the story unfold. Chingle, the eagle, was out one day and Bunya, the hunter, was after him. But he was frightened, Bunya, and he hid it, he hid up a tree. Now the Bram Bram 
elk brothers came along hunting and they threw their spears at Chingle. One landed in his chest, one landed in his neck, and the other one landed in his rump. That story is told in the night sky. And way up here is Bunya, who's punished for his cowardice, and he was turned into a possum. The Bram Bram Bulk brothers are the two pointers, and Chingle, the eagle, is the dark space between the stars. But the Southern Cross was important for another story here in Australia, and another flag was made to represent that Southern Cross. And it came about thus. In 1851, the cry of gold rang out and people flocked to the district. Why, in only a few weeks, a tent city had sprung up like mushrooms after a heavy rain. Now, to distinguish where people were and who they were, flags were flown to act as signposts. But the years passed and the government forces from England, the Redcoats, said that this was crown land and if people wanted to look for gold, they would have to pay a tax. For many people who had arrived here, they had no money left and they were hoping to make their fortune and the mining taxes were crippling. So they gathered together to talk about what might be done. And they decided that they would need a flag. The signposts already on the gold fields, a mortar and pestle for the doctor, three sheaves of wheat for the baker, and over there, different nationalities, the Lone Star of the Texans. What could they have to call everybody together to fight this insurrection? Well, it is said that Lieutenant Captain, that Captain Ross from Canada, one night he was at a political meeting deciding what could be done and that the flag was needed. And he went outside to stretch his leg and take a pipe. And he looked up into the night sky and he saw the Southern Cross. And he went back inside and he said, I've got it. Come out here and I'll show you. And so he hastily drew a flag based on a similar one in Quebec, in Canada. Now, the way I tell the story is that three women were asked to sew it together and the blue was from dress material and the white was petticoat material. And there are eight points to the stars because it was easy to fold and fold and cut. Well, the flag was finished. And on the 29th of November, 1854, 12,000 miners gathered under the shining stars of the flag they called Eureka Flag. Now one stood forward as a natural leader. His name was Peter Lolo and he was from Ireland. And he had the whole crowd call out with him, we swear by the Southern Cross to stand truly by each other and to fight to defend our rights and liberties. Well, there's much more to that story, but that's for another time. But the dress? Well, 150 years after men and women of the goldfields were given the vote, our Premier decided that we would celebrate and a world music festival was to happen on the goldfields and musicians from all around the world would be invited to play. The tent was huge. It can, was allowed big enough for 4,000 people and I was asked to be the MC. and I decided I needed something special and so the Southern Cross was sewn onto my dress. Another reason why the Southern Cross stars is such an important constellation here in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm.